Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Cutting Corners Vinyls. And over here, I like to focus on all things vinyl, sublimation, and screen printing. I don't focus on perfection because without mistakes, how else are you supposed to learn anything? I have over 15 years of professional experience, if you want to call it that. So you might see things done a little bit differently over here than what you're used to seeing them. I also have a lot of health issues, so words can be extremely difficult for me, and I also might mess up when I'm editing a tutorial and things like that, so please be forgiving. <laughs> things can be a little bit difficult. Doctors are still, we're still working on things, so please be understanding. I'm also extremely honest about affiliate links and when things are sent to me, so if that sounds like something you're into, then please stick around and think about joining the Cut and Corners family. If not, you may want to buzz on because my honeybees have a real sting to them. So, today as you can tell from the title, we are going to be talking about light pads, light boxes, however you want to call it. They're basically the same thing. So if that sounds like an interesting topic, well, stay tuned. Before we jump into the light box light pad video portion, if you don't want to hear about this, you can skip ahead. I really wasn't going to talk about this portion of my health stuff before I went to the doctor, but because it is kind of affecting my filming stuff, I figured I would kind of address the elephant in the room. So I've been dealing with some blood pressure issues and it's kind of getting worse. Now I have an appointment with the cardiologist on the 6th. And um, so I've been having blood pressure issues, dizzy spells, that type of thing. And they were infrequent, then they started getting more and more frequent, and now they're pretty frequent. And it's affecting me quite a bit with being able to film uh, with the dizzy spells and things like that. Um, so uh, my blood pressure's been like increasing quite frequently and then when it drops I have bad dizzy spells um so like on my referral it's like postural something um and then I like when I was at my regular GP they said I have dusky feet and then because both of the boys have uh heart conditions that's also included on it so that they were born with so I have to go see the cardiologist ASAP I'm going on the 6th but I wanted people to know kind of what's going on um, because you know I've always dealt with some circulation issues I've talked about that many a times because you know but I think it's kind of gotten well, I mean, I know it's kind of gotten worse. I mean, I don't think it's probably the most normal thing, but in my house, when it's the daytime, I have the AC set on 78 degrees, and then I'm still in a sweater and fully dressed. So, yeah. Um, but I kind of wanted to let people know, because I've always been honest about my health stuff. I mean, I try not to let y'all know, like, what ifs. But... It is affecting being able to film because when I'm dizzy and stuff like that and it, it's like I get high heart rate notifications and then I have to take my blood pressure so I can let the doctor and stuff like to be able to keep track of everything um, but like my heart blood stuff has always been pretty good like I don't have a high like cholesterol or anything like that so I don't know <laughs> just to kind of give you an update probably not a lot of you will care but I wanted to inform you I'll leave a timestamp for the people who don't care okie dokie so Today we're going to be talking about light pads, bright pads, light boxes, whatever way you want to spin it. They're all kind of the same thing. Now, I've always had a light box at our shop. Typically a big one. 
and what they're good for we've always used them for either lining up screens for like your transparencies for screens for lining up multiple color decals for tracing out designs when you need to do trace out hand like when people brought in things that needed to be scanned in and sometimes the lines weren't that great so they come in handy now for me with dealing with vision issues because that's something i've been dealing with i was diagnosed with the early stages of glaucoma as well you know can't win for losing so i needed a new smaller light box light pad so i was on the hunt and i bought the cricut bright pad first which it was all great fun and wonderful and then I went on the hunt for another and so I have a few different ones to show you and I will go over them show you with me working with some vinyl now I did speed through the tutorials on these because they are four color designs and they're intricate but I will show you the tutorials on them and then at the end of the video and I do kind of go over the pricing, the sizing, that kind of thing. And at the end of the video, I will go over my favorites and why. And all of that fun kind of stuff. So if you want to see all that, let's get into it. First light pad, light box we're going to talk about is the Cricut Bright Pad. Now, they have two different versions of this. They have the regular Bright Pad, which is this one. And then they also have the Cricut Bright Pad Go, which the Bright Pad Go retails for $99. I don't have that one. This one I bought on clearance at Target. I think, or not clearance, open box. I think I paid $47 for it. Not a bad price. This one takes a micro USB. This one is not rechargeable. You do have to keep it plugged in. It is is the lit area on this is 11 and a half by nine. It has three different brightness levels. There's one, this is two, and there's three. Now, as you know, I have some vision issues, so I wanted to have a light pad light box. I've always had one at the store, but I needed something more compact. So initially I bought the Cricut Bright Pad. Now, I'm gonna talk about the next one I bought, but to kind of make it a little bit more comparable, and the other two that I have that we're also gonna be comparing to the Caterpillar, I went ahead and purchased off of Amazon. This is an Alvin non-scoring mat. As you can see, I always have a non-scoring mat on my table, but this is transparent. This is kind of, where this video came from. I wanted to make something that was equivalent to the cutter pillar, but for cheaper. So this is the Alvin non-scoring mat. They do make this smaller. This one is $20 and this is the, what is this, 12 by 18? And this one is I think 20 bucks and then they make a nine by 12, which is $10. But I got one that was kind of the middle of the road. That would work with all of them so just so you know now we're going to be making picture frames for all of them they're inspirational picture frames these came from the dollar tree three of them were making <clears throat> four by four picture frames actually they're at measure five by five once you take out the mat because we're going to make them clear we're going to make stained glass picture frames and then one of them's going to be one of the Ikea picture frames. This is the Masabo. You're gonna need your picture frame. You're gonna need your vinyls, which I am using the same vinyls for all the picture frames today. So I'm using the Specialty Materials Craft Vinyl in matte black. I am using the Transparent Glitter in hot pink, hollow silver, and lime. Isn't that pretty? These are all the transparent glitters. 
You're also going to need alcohol to clean. This I use is 99% isopropyl. I use 99% because it doesn't leave a residue and it dries really quick. It is amazing at removing adhesive as well. I'm going to post a reel about it. You'll see because I had to remove all of the adhesive that I had previously stuck down. It's awesome. Scissors, pick. And the winners of all the picks that I gave away, I'm going to ship whenever I ship the Patreon kits. So that's how bright the Cricut Bright Pad is. Next up, we have the Tohito Light Pad. Now this one was sent to me and this retails for $69. This one is 11.9 by 15.2. Now this one is wireless. This one takes a USB-C as a charger and it goes in here. Okay, now if you turn this over, you can take and flip this up and you can make this into an easel as well. It has a magnet thing up here to be able to hold things in place and you have three warmth settings and then there are six light levels. So I like to keep it on just the cool setting and then on the brightest setting. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and well, I think there's only five. Did I write six? Yeah, I wrote six because I think I wrote the wrong one. So six, it's actually five. But there's the cool, warm, and then like the daylight setting. Stained glass number two. What do you think? Isn't that pretty? And that's light box number two. Yeah. We have the Caterpillar Glow Premium LED light board. Now this retails for $159. This takes a USB-C. Now this one is wireless and this one comes with the self-healing cutting mat and you can buy these separate for about $25. This has three light levels and the light board size that's on here is 11 inches by 17 inches and as you can see the light levels on here are pretty bright i mean is really bright as i said this has got a really nice size this is also wireless so you can take this with you this is made to be cut on it is a nice smooth surface Without it, it is very, very sturdy. Look how pretty. So last but certainly not least is the HSK A2 light board. So the A2 stands for the size of this. So this is 25.39 inches by 18 point five four inches so this is not wireless it has a two-part connector that looks like this you connect the male and the female end together so it came with this little plug and you just plug it in and it does have magnets to hold it together like to actually put stuff to it so or to like it has rubber feet sorry not magnets rubber feet to kind of hold it in place 
She's nice and flat and sturdy. It does have measurements on it. Power button's very easy to see. It has six light levels. One, so you got your power button. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you can see it gets nice and bright. It's dirty right now. This one retails for $66. So it's expensive, but they have different sizes in it. It's nice and flat, sturdy. I like how bright it is. It is the brightest out of the bunch of it. And I like the size of it. It's the biggest, which is why I bought it. Drop the button. Because as I said, I wanted something to be able to do bigger decals bigger projects on. That's why I bought it. But as you can see, it's big. And again, that's why I chose this one. Um, because I couldn't find anything like this in the cuttables or cutter pillar. Why did I say cuttables? And I wanted something big enough to do the bigger projects because that was kind of what I felt was lacking. Okie dokie. So here is my final stained glass picture frame done. I love how these came out. I think that they're absolutely gorgeous. And I'll tell you, I love this process even though these videos, well, this video, considering that it took an ungodly amount of time to do this in days and so much time to finish these, but I love how they came out. I think that they're absolutely stunning. So, for all four of these light pads, light boxes. Now, the additional cutting mat that I bought is by Alvin. Now, I bought the 12 by 18, which runs about 20 bucks on Amazon. I do have my Amazon store listed in the description box. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, but I have all of the light boxes, light pads listed in there. I don't know if I have the Cricut one in there, but if not, I do have my Cricut link in the description box if you're interested in buying one of the bright pads. Um, but let's talk about them. From priced lowest to highest, the Cricut one is the cheapest. Then you have the HSK. So the Cricut one is $59.99 and that is a 11.5 by 9 inches. So it is the smallest out of all three of them. It has three brightness levels, and I think it is the dimmest out of all of them. When I look at them all three next to each other, it is the dimmest. Um, it is also the smallest. Then the next size is the Tojito, but that one is also wireless. I do like that the Tojito is, it has the, it's the only one out of all four of them that has the easel on it and the next one in price is going to be the HSK which is $66. The HSK is also the largest out of them at 25.39 by 18.54. It has five different light levels and it is as I said that is the biggest one and is the brightest one out of all of them. So, for me, it kind of comes down to what you're wanting to do with it and what's important to you. Do you want it to be wireless? Because to me, the bright pad, for, I'm sorry, the Cutter Pillar Glow, which I love that. I love that it's aluminum. It feels nice and sturdy with it being aluminum. I like that the mats are made for it, but they are more expensive than the Alvin mats. And the Alvin mats are a little bit thicker, 
So you've got that to go along with it. Um, so there's that. It's kind of a hard decision. Because also I do like on the Tojito that it has those three different color settings for the lights because sometimes the white lights can hurt your eyes. So I think it's kind of up for y'all to kind of decide on what features that are important to you. But I give you the facts. As I said, the Tojito was sent to me. My two favorites are the cutter pillar because I love the aluminum construction, but it is pricey. I like that the mat is made for it. I like that it is wireless and you can take it with you. And I feel like it is a good sturdy material and the mat is made for it. So you're, you know that it is made to be cut on. So there's that. I like the HSK because it is affordable and it is massive. So I do like the price range for it because I can add the cut and mat to it and it's still less than $100. So in my mind, it would be Cutter Pillar, HSK, Tojito, because I do like that the fact that the Tojito has the color modes. So if you are someone like me who gets bothered by lighting because migraines, you can adjust the lighting settings. So you can adjust it from the cool lighting to more of those warm tones so it doesn't bother your head. And it's still larger. It does have a sturdy construction to it and with that easel setting. So if you are sitting like and watching TV and weeding, you can have it and it has that magnet. See, that's the problem. The magnet in the easel can bring it up in a rank. And that's part of the thing. It depends on what you're wanting it for. So we're not going to rank them by that. You need to choose for what you're wanting it for. To me, the Cricut is honestly my least favorite one. The Cricut compared to the others doesn't have, and, and as I said before, I love Cricut for certain things. The Cricut was my favorite to cut, like I used my Cricut to cut the designs on because it can cut this stuff better than anything else. The Cricut doesn't have a leg to stand on as far as the light pads for this. Not as far as price, not as far as size, and it doesn't have anything that's super unique to make it stand out in this race but as far as everything else goes each light pad has something unique that would make it a winner for this if you're looking for something that is big and inexpensive I would go for the HSK if you're looking for something to sit and weed so you're not hunched over I would go with the Tojito if you're looking for something to cut on that is versatile, that is made really well, I would go with the cutter pillar. That is my end game. But here's how I could rank it. And if you're looking for something small and portable, I would go with the Cricut. <laughs> but you still have to plug it in. <laughs> so. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button, comment, all that fun kind of stuff. I haven't contacted the winners yet about the picks. I will soon. I love you guys and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.